Hi, everyone. I'm David. Um, I should say I told some of my coworkers that I was being interviewed by all of you, and they are so jealous that I'm the one that gets to be interviewed. <laughs> uh, we might have some special guests that stop by this room in a little bit, so we'll watch out for them. That'd be great. Okay, so Ryan's going to start us off. Go ahead, Ryan. What is your school mascot in school colors? What is your school mascot in school colors? So our school mascot is the Colonial, uh, which is kind of like a old historical American. Um, and our school colors are buff and blue, which is almost like a yellow and blue color. Good question. How did that become your mascot? So what made you choose the Colonial as your mascot? Sure. So I don't know if you all know who George Washington was. Mm -hmm. uh, who was he? Who can tell me who he was? A president. Which one? The first. There you go. The first. You, got, you are smart. So George Washington was the first president of the United States, and we named our university after him. Um, and since he was a colonial, we thought that he would be a good mascot for our university. What do you guys think? It kind of looks like him, though, doesn't it, in that sign? You can show. They got their uh, colonial signs here. Oh, man, fantastic. <laughs> Those look good. So if you actually come to campus, we have statues of George Washington all around campus um, reminding our students to be just like him and to, uh, to lead with, with honor and integrity. How many students attend your school? So how many students attend George Washington? So we have about 9,500 undergraduate students. Um, so we're, for universities, we're a medium-sized school. Um, but I think it's the perfect size because there's enough students where you're able to, um, to make a lot of different friends. But it's not so big where you're never seeing any of the friends that you have all over campus. You know, I went to a school that was just a, just a little bit smaller, about 7,000. And oh. to me, I, th I found it was the perfect size mm -hmm. because you knew just about everyone, but every once in a while you'd go to a class or whatever it was and you'd make a new friend or get to run into somebody new and it was nice. Definitely. Absolutely. Now, Ryan had the opportunity, this is his second interview, he's filling in for somebody who's, uh, who's out sick today. And he, okay. had, he had the ability to interview Oklahoma earlier in the month. And there was a big drastic number in, in the number of students compared mm -hmm. to the University of Oklahoma, right? They had about what? 22,000. Wow. That's and, a big school. Yep. Go ahead, Caitlin. How big are your class sizes? Good question. So our average class size is about 28 students. Um, there are some really big classes where you might have 100, 150 kids in one class. Which is a lot. Imagine having 150 kids in your class. Well, that's a lot. Uh -huh. um, but those are really just our introduction classes. So your first biology class that you take or a math class might have that many students. But once you get to your second year here at GW, your class sizes get really small. So there are some classes that have 10 students in them. There are some that have 15 students in them. Um, so you're not always in those giant classes where you... Uh, are surrounded by 150 other people. That's what I try to tell the kids, too. I said, you know, when you first go into school, you might take a science class or a writing class or an English class, and it's like going to be like you're sitting in a movie theater. Right. But then when you get into that specialty area that you really are, are learning how to become in your profession, for example, Briella wants to be a movie director, you know, when you get into those film study classes, there might only be eight or ten students in a class, and you might be sitting around a round table with your professor. So right. you might have it, uh, you know, the opportunity to get very intimate with your professors on that level in those higher up, upper level courses. Exactly. Yep. How far is your school from Keysport, New Jersey? How far are we from Keysport, New Jersey? So we are right in the heart of Washington D.C., which I think is just over two hours away. It might be two and a half hours. Yeah, it's about two and a half. So it's a really quick drive. Um, you can come down to Washington, D.C. anytime and, and visit our school. Um, but like I said, we're right in the heart of Washington, D.C. Have any of you visited Washington before? Yeah, a couple. A couple? Yep. So do you know where the White House is, or have you been to the White House, seen where the president lives? So our campus is about half a mile away, even, sh even shorter than that. Um, four blocks, actually, is how far it is from our main campus to where the president and the first lady live. So they're almost like our neighbors. 
So now um, you guys, are you guys like right on the mall, like the, the mall, the National Mall there? We're a couple blocks up from the National Mall, um, but we are very close. Um, there was just a big event here in Washington. It's called the Inauguration, mm -hmm. where the president is sworn in to serve another four years. Our students could walk to the inauguration to see that happen. That's right. Really um, so we really are in, in the middle of Washington, D.C. So you would consider your campus very urban then? Absolutely, yep. Uh, we're an urban campus. There's lots of people walking around. If you were to cross the street, you most likely most likely would be honked at by a car. Um, so it's a it's a city campus, but I think that's what makes GW really exciting. Thank you. What types of things are there to do and around your school? What types of things are there to do uh, in and around your school? So obviously, you're going to be very unique because your school is located right in the heart of the city. So what types of things are there to do for students? Definitely. So our students can go out into Washington, D.C. And, and explore the city. Um, there are a lot of museums all over D.C. Um, the Natural History Museum, the Air and Space Museum, there's art museums um, that our students can get to really easily. Um, but also there's lots of things happening like baseball games. Coming up soon is baseball season. Um, they can go and uh, go to the Kennedy Center, where there are lots of different art performances, like dance and music. Um, but then there's a, a ton of things that happen on campus as well um, that are just for GW students. Um, whether it's uh, going to a concert, um, listening to music. Uh, we have this thing in a couple weeks called a chalk-in, where they shut down a street going through our campus, and our students can draw in chalk on, on the street um, really whatever they want. So there's a ton of things that happen on our campus all the time. Are any of you draw? Are or are any of you artists? I should ask. Any artists? Oh yeah, there's so big art art majors here. The chalk in would be perfect for you. Uh, they spend the whole day drawing these works of art on the street, and it's a lot of fun. And we're really looking forward to it. You know, I think it's you, you know, especially George Washington or NYU or any of those schools that are are in that in a major metropolitan area, kind of offer things that some of the more traditional campuses may not offer. In things like you said, you know, you have the ability to go to a professional sporting event, you know, and probably just take a subway or a taxi cab to any of the stadiums for either you know the Wizards or the Nationals. Um, and you guys have at your disposal, you know, the Library of Congress, the Smithsonian, if you guys have ever saw A Night at the Museum, it was filmed in, or A Night at the Museum 2 was filmed, you know, right in the Smithsonian and the Air and Space Museum in Washington, D.C. Absolutely, yeah. If any of those movies where it's filmed in Washington, we are really close to all of those different things. Um, so our students can walk to a lot of places. The Metro uh, has a station right on our campus. Uh, which makes it easy to get all over D.C. Um, and I think also what's really cool is that our students get to do internships. I don't know if you've heard of internships yet from any of the other schools, um, but almost it's like a job that you have outside of school, whether it's with um, a, an organization or the government or an, a museum, and really get to, to learn in the real world what you're learning in class. Um, so we have students that will take the metro and uh, go and work at a hospital uh, alongside doctors. I don't know if any of you want to be doctors when you grow up. Um, we have a lot of those here on campus. Um, but also we have a student that's working in the West Wing of the White House right now um, with the president um, every single day. So our, being, being in the city really gives our students a lot of opportunities that um, being somewhere else in the country you don't have um, when you're at school. Now, we would probably be staying on campus for the most part as, you know, a two and a half hours, it's close enough to go home if we had to, but, you know, we'd probably be staying on campus. Do most students stay on campus, and is there a lot of events going on on the weekends for students to take part in? There is a lot of things happening on campus every single weekend. Um, a lot of students will stay on campus because there's just so much happening that they don't want to leave. Um, so they go to those concerts, they go to baseball games, um, basketball is our big sport here, and I'm, I'm guessing some of you might ask about sports in a little bit, um, but you go to, to GW basketball games and cheer on the Colonials. Um, so there is a lot of things happening every single weekend on campus, um, but especially now that it's spring in D.C. and spring in New Jersey as well, 
Um, it's really nice weather, so a lot of students are going to the National Mall and um, hanging out, just doing homework out on the grass, or they might play frisbee or, um, or kickball. So there's a lot of different things that our students can do in D.C. every single weekend. I don't know about you guys, but I think it would be pretty awesome to walk out of my dorm with a bunch of friends and a frisbee and get to play frisbee among some of the most iconic buildings in the entire country. I mean, exactly. You the Capitol on one end, the Lincoln Memorial on the other, the Washington Monument, right? In, I mean, it's all right in your backyard. Exactly. Go ahead, Briella. What types of sports are offered at GW? So what types of sports are offered at GW? Good question. So we have 25 different sports on campus. Um, like I said, basketball is our big sport. Um, it is, the, everyone goes to basketball games, they go crazy. I actually have, our students at basketball games will wear these big hats. Oh, and cool. And cheer on the Colonials. You can see GW in the hat. Nice. I'll see if I can find any of these to send to you guys. That'd be awesome. Um, but, so basketball is our big sport, um, but we also have baseball and soccer. Uh, there is a golf team. Um, sailing is our newest sport on campus. It was just started this year as a varsity sport. Um, so there's a lot of students that, that play sports and, and are stay and stay active. Um, we also have they're called club sports, where they're not as um, as intense as varsity sports. But you can play with a group of friends. You can play with a team of people that you meet in a classroom. Um, those are the ones that play soccer on the National Mall with uh, the Capitol on one side and the, the Lincoln Memorial on the other side. Um, so there's a lot of different options for students to, to play sports. That's, that's great, too, the club sports, because if, you know, maybe you're not um, have enough skills to play on that Division One level and you love playing that sport, you can always play club or intramural sports to continue, you know, your love for that sport and playing it. It also a lot of times will give you the opportunity to play something maybe you've never even played before in your life. Right. Exactly. So maybe your roommate is a, a huge fan of playing softball and they love to play softball. They might drag you along to one of their games that they're playing and, and say, why don't you try uh, playing softball? Um, and it's really easy to, to get involved if that's something that you find out that you love to do. Do you have any rivals? Do you guys have any rivals? Any rivals? That's a great question. Um, so I think our biggest rival is, uh, one of them is St. Louis University, which is in our conference. Um, and I see behind you um, on that wall, St. Louis University's yeah. mascot. The Belkins are right there. Mm -hmm. uh, they're one of our big rivals. Uh -huh. um, I think Fordham, which is right outside of New York, is yep. also a big rival of ours. Uh, we are in the Atlantic 10 Conference for our varsity sports. Um, so that's who we play all of our sports against, and they're really competitive games, and, and um, I think a lot of our students will go to all those games when we're competing against, um, especially St. Louis and Fordham. So I thought it would have been um, American or, uh, or uh, William and Mary. Yeah, so American is in the same city as, as us, but we don't get to play them as often as some of uh, those other teams in, uh, in our league. Um, but when, when we do play American, especially in basketball, um, this campus goes crazy, and, and <laughs> a lot of our students are get pumped up for it. Excellent. Good questions. Does your school have any traditions? Does your school have any traditions? Does our school have any traditions? We have a lot of traditions on campus. Um, we've actually been around since 1820, um, so we're an old university, and a lot of these traditions um, have been around for a long time. Um, I think one of our biggest traditions is, um, so if you come to our campus, right on campus we have a statue of a hippo, which is a little out of place for Washington, D.C., um, and the rumor is if you kind of rub the hippo's nose, it's good luck. Um, I'm not sure why we have a hippo on campus, it just <laughs> kind of showed up there one day. Um, I think our president wanted uh, to have a new mascot, so we put that statue out. Um, so that's one of our biggest traditions, and you'll see a lot of students rubbing the hippo's nose for luck before a test or um, before they hear if they're coming to GW um, the next year. Um, but also we have a, a huge orientation program, uh, which happens for all of our freshman students before they start at GW. It's called Colonial Inauguration. Um, and a lot of students, it kind of gets them into the G 
GW mind where they they start learning a lot about our campus and, and what happens here. Um, so we have a lot of different traditions that um, our students get to take part in. Excellent. And I found that a lot of schools when we talk to them, uh, you know, with convocation, usually there's some sort of tradition that goes along with it, whether it be an archway that you walk through or a seal. But I like the one about the statue. Well, next time I'm in D.C., I'm going to have to look for the uh, for the hippo statue there. Exactly. It's kind of hidden, but you, you can find it really easily. Um, and also what's cool, and another cool tradition of ours, sorry, before you ask your next question. No, that's all right. Um, our graduation is held on the National Mall. Um, so you're looking at the Washington Monument as you walk across that stage and get your diploma. Um, so that's another great tradition here at GW. It's very unique to your area, too. I think that's something that's really special about Exactly. Go ahead. Why did your school test my so what is George Washington University best known for? What are we best known for? Um, so Washington, D.C., as you probably know, is where our government's located. So our politics program is really strong. It's a, a fantastic place to study politics. Um, a lot of our students will um, they'll do internships in the Capitol with their members of Congress. Um, they'll work at the White House. Um, so I think uh, politics is definitely a strong point. Um, we also have a really strong science program. We're building a brand new science building that's going to be done next year. Um, it's going to cost us $400 million, which is a lot of money, but it's going to be a great way for our students to learn about science and engineering um, and become the next great scientist in the U.S. Um, so academically, I think those are two of our strong points at GW. Um, but also, I think we're known for, for our location. If someone thinks about going to Washington, D.C. to study, they think about coming to GW because we're right in the middle of it all. There's so much around our campus that, um, that they can experience and, and get involved with. Um, so I think that's what, what our, our students look for, and that's what we're known for um, by other people. As I was putting together my college board, I, I tried to put at least one, one or two schools up from every state, uh, and including the District of Columbia, and that was, GW was the first that popped to my mind as I, as I thought of it, and that I think was one of the reasons that, and of course I picked a very appealing photo of your mascot, I think were the two, some of the reasons why, you know, the kids really wanted to find out more about GW. Right. Go ahead, Tristan. Why do people choose to attend so when people come to visit GW, what is it about the campus and the school itself that makes people really want to choose to go to school there? That's a great question. Um, I think being in the city is a huge part of why people come to GW. To GW. If you walk around campus, you'll see skyscrapers. Like I said, you're going to see a lot of different people. Um, so that's it's a really exciting place to go to school, and there's a lot of energy that you feel when you visit and take a tour. Um, so I think that, that draws a lot of people to our campus. Um, I also think how friendly a lot of our students are. If you were just to stop someone on the street to say hi and ask them questions, I think they would um, because they, they're, they're excited to meet you and learn a little bit more about you. Um, so when, you, when you're on a tour, a lot of people like meeting with our students because they're all so friendly. Um, so I think those two things are, are big draws for GW and why a lot of people choose to come here. Um, but also, uh, our academics are really strong. You learn a lot of different things here at GW um, that uh, are interesting to you, that might sound really exciting to you, and uh, you can really figure out if it's something that you want to do um, for, for a long time after you do graduate from college. Interesting. How big is GW's campus? So our campus is um, about four blocks by four blocks. Um, so if you, if you think of a square um, and how big of a square um, you can see on a, on a whiteboard or on a chalkboard, uh, if you put four on each side, that's how big our campus is. So it's really small. It's really compact. Um, but everything fits in one, one spot in our city. Um, so you can walk everywhere really quickly. You can go from one side of campus to the other for class in five minutes. Um, so we are really, we're really just a square in Washington, D.C. Good question. How do most people get around 
So how do most people get around campus and around the city as well? Because I'm sure well, you're, they're probably not allowed to bring a car to school, correct? Correct. So your freshman year, you aren't allowed to have a car on campus. You can have a car on campus as a sophomore and above, but it's really expensive because there's not a lot of parking in Washington, D.C. Um, so a lot of students will walk. Um, we are a really walkable campus, so it's easy to get around by foot. Um, there's a lot of bikes on campus. If you were to walk around, you see lots of bikes uh, locked up to fences and, and bike posts all over our campus. Um, but also Metro is really a great way to get all over Washington, D.C. Um, I said before, there's a Metro stop right on our campus that can take you really anywhere in Washington, uh, Maryland, or uh, Northern Virginia. Um, so you can get anywhere using our Metro system. Do, do you guys know what the Metro is? No. <laughs> well, we call, so, them, we call them up here the subway. Do you guys know what the mm -hmm. subways are? Yeah. Down in Washington, D.C., they call it the Metro. It's the same as the subway. Most of it's underground, so you're in big tunnels underground, and you ride on train cars um, to get wherever you want. Go ahead, Tristan. What are your most popular majors? Good question. So um, politics is a big major here at GW. Uh, psychology is another big major. Um, I think biology, um, our sciences are really strong, and they're big majors here on campus. A lot of people study that. Um, a, a lot of our future doctors will study biology here at GW. Um, we also have um, a really strong engineering program. Um, th where they learn how to build bridges and they learn how to make these big, huge things that can, uh, uh, that can be built all over the country. So a lot of our students will major in engineering as well. Now, do you guys have your own medical school as well? We do. So we have um, a hospital here at GW where uh, there is a medical school. Um, so students can, uh, can stay at GW after they graduate um, and go to med school here. Now, how about a veterinary school? Because I know there's a, a future vet up here. Oh, so we don't have a veterinary school, um, unfortunately, so you can't learn to take care of those little dogs and little cats. Um, but I think GW prepares our students to go to veterinary school after they graduate, and they, they're really ready to do well there, so they uh, whether the it's taking classes that um, can help you get into vet school and be prepared to take classes there. Um, or even doing internships or research as well. So they can um, do their undergrad in biology or, or whatever it might be at GW and then apply to veterinary school from there. Exactly, yep. Um, so you can actually take classes that um, talk about animals and their how their bodies work and what goes into their bodies. Um, so when you are in veterinary school, you're, you're ready for those classes that you have to take when you're there. Good job. So what is the cost of GW? Sure. So um, I believe our total cost, including tuition and living on campus, is right around $60,000, which is a lot of money. I see all of your faces. Um, but I will say that we have a lot of different ways that, um, G that students can afford GW. Uh, we have a lot of different merit scholarships um, where we can give out money. It's up to $30,000. Um, based on your SAT scores and your GPA in, in high school um, that we're able to give out to students. Uh, we also have a lot of financial aid that can help students who want to be here at GW as well. I always tell the kids whenever we do these interviews and that number gets thrown out and their faces always drop when they hear these <laughs> gigantic numbers, I always tell them, go and visit a school. If you love the school and you get accepted to the school, there's always ways to find out how to pay for that school. Exactly. Whether it be through scholarships, whether it be through applying for financial aid where the federal government will lend you money to go mm -hmm. to school and then you pay them back once you graduate and get a good job. There's always ways to find, there's always a way to find out, uh, or there's always somehow to find a way to pay for those schools. Exactly. So if, if you there's go there and love it, there's a way. Exactly. And a lot of our students will actually work um, on campus, it's called work study. Um, we have a, a large amount of students who work in our office, and that helps pay for their tuition as well while they're on campus. Um, so I think uh, our financial financial aid office does a really good job at making GW affordable 
Um, because when you hear that number, it's it's a lot of money, and your faces all were. It was actually funny to look at your faces as I said that. Um, but it it's becomes a lot smaller when there's lots of different uh, scholarships and, and loans that you can get um, while you're on campus. Now, do you only offer scholarships on merit, or do you have you know uh, scholarships that are based on? maybe clubs and uh, things that you've done outside of school, if, you've, uh, if you're someone who has started organizations here in town, mm -hmm. uh, if you're active in different you know, clubs and organizations at the high school level, or is it strictly merit-based? Definitely. We do have uh, scholarships for um, lots of different activities um, that you might be involved with. Um, we have scholarships for some of our science students. If you want to study science, there are some of those available. Uh, we actually have a student who works in our office that has a scholarship for playing in our marching band. Um, I think he plays the trumpet, and every year he gets a, a, a scholarship to help him pay for his tuition as well. Um, so there's a lot of different opportunities for students to, to bring that cost down a little bit and, um, and to earn money to help pay for GW. Now I have a question. Yeah. For your admission standards, are, do you guys take a strictly academic approach when looking at admissions to GW, or do you kind of take that holistic approach where you know you really evaluate the entire student? What type of person is this? You know, look at re letters of recommendation, uh, volunteerism, things like that that they've done besides just strictly academic, you know, and standardized test scores. Definitely, we take a, a holistic approach to the application process. Um, while academics is really important, we want you guys to, to do well in, in, in school and take really hard classes when you're in high school. Um, but we also want well-rounded students who are involved and they play sports or they do community service or um, do all, all these different things that are going to also do that while they're here at GW. Um, so we look at, at what you've done during high school, whether it's played on the football team and been the captain of the football team or uh, you were a cheerleader or you played in the band or whatever it may be, uh, those are all things that we're looking for uh, when we look at applicants. Um, so we definitely want students who are smart, and I know all five of you are smart students and are doing well in school, um, but we also want people that are going to do a lot of different things while they're here on campus. Excellent. Do you have any famous alumni? Do you have any famous alumni? We have any famous alumni? We have a lot of famous alumni. Um, we have an, an actress named Carrie Washington, uh, who is on a lot of different TV shows right now. Um, she graduated from GW, um, and she's actually speaking speaking at our graduation this year to our seniors. Uh, we have a lot of different politicians um, who have graduated from GW, in, including Colin Powell, um, who you all probably don't know him. He was a this. Uh, uh, the Secretary of State um, a couple years ago. Mm -hmm. um, but we have a lot of different alumni from GW who have gone on to do really great things after they graduated. Excellent. What do you like most about school? Now, are you a GW alumni? So I am not a GW alumni. Um, I grew up in Washington, D.C., so I wanted to get away from the city for a little bit for college. So I actually went to college in Pennsylvania. Um, but I think the question was, what's my favorite thing about GW? Well, coming back to work at GW, what is your favorite thing about working there now? And your favorite thing about the university as a whole? Yeah, so coming back to Washington and working at GW, um, I've been really impre impressed with what our students do outside the classroom. Um, I don't know how they get sleep because they're always doing so many different things every single day. Um, whether it's going to clubs or... Um, playing a sport or getting internships. Um, I don't know how they find time to do all of that while also doing all their homework every night um, because they are always staying involved. Um, and I think I'm really impressed with, with all the different things that they do. Um, and I, I kind of wish I got to do it when I was in college um, because it all sounds like a lot of fun too. Um, so I think that's what I'm most impressed and most excited about GW. I, I feel the same way. You know, I, I started doing this project with the kids last year, and in talking to all of these different schools that I've talked to, I said, you know, hindsight's always twenty twenty. But I mean, it, the amount of opportunities that are out there for kids is is unbelievable. And I, you know, I tell them all the time, whatever whatever you do, decide, and whatever you do, decide on. Take full advantage of everything that's out there. Join yeah. clubs that you thought you might never join. 
and, and get involved in everything you can possibly get involved in because it's only going to help you along the line further down the road. Exactly. And we have over 400 different clubs on campus. So there's a lot of different things that you can get involved with and, and um, learn about and, and have fun with as well. Excellent. Go ahead, Adrian. You have a question? So how much homework do you actually get at GW? So I think our students get a good amount of homework, probably two or three hours per night, uh, whether it's writing papers or reading. Um, but it all prepares you to, to be ready for class. And um, I think a lot of our students enjoy their homework. They read about really interesting things um, and do research on a lot of different things in, online and on uh, different websites. So um, it sounds like a lot, but it's not as bad as you think. And it's not as bad, too, when you're learning about something that you want to do uh, as a profession. You know, when I was doing all my homework about becoming a teacher, it was actually enjoyable for me because it, it was helping me become better at what I was going to do later on. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Um, so, like, how many people stay there overnight? How many students live on campus? So our freshmen and sophomore students, our first year and, so and second year students, all live on campus uh, their first two years. Um, so about half of our student body lives on campus um, though, because they're freshmen and sophomores. Um, and then your junior and senior year, um, about 40% of our junior and seniors stay on campus as well. Um, so in total, that's about 8,000 students that will stay on campus every single night. Every night. Yep. Go ahead, Adrian. Um. How much oh, good, good question. In those large classes where you can get over 100 students in there, how many teachers are in there with you? There's just one professor in each of those classes with you, one teacher. Um, so they are talking to you, and, and it's almost like a lecture uh, where they are talking about all of this different material that they know and that they want you to learn. Um, but in those really big classes where you have so many different people, they actually break up into almost like study classes uh, with a teaching assistant um, who might be a graduate student or a, a, doctor stu a doctoral student um, where you can ask questions and it's a much smaller group um, where you can definitely get answers to questions you might have. Yeah, I know with those, with those larger lecture halls too, chances are you're not really going to have a lot of time to ask questions during that large lecture. Right. You have to wait till that smaller breakdown section or, you know, the, some advice that we got from other people where if you are in a class like that, sit in the front. You won't even know that there's that many people behind you. Exactly. Go ahead, um, and that's being able to sit in the front is when the professors notice you and, and if you do have a question and you raise your hand, they can call on you because they see you uh, rather than sitting way, way in the back. And actually, I have two surprise guests. Uh -oh. Let me turn. So there you guys. Hi, everybody. Give a wave. Tyson hey. and Kirsten. Hi. They were so excited that I got to interview you, and they wanted to come say hi. Uh, they both work here in the office as well. Do you have any questions that you want to ask them? Um, what did you guys all go to college for? Uh, I studied anthropology in college. I got a bachelor in science in anthropology, which is the study of people and cultures and why people believe what they believe or why they uh, or why they choose a particular religion or um, customs based upon where they live in the world. So that's what I studied in college. Excellent. And I actually studied the same thing that Tyson studied, um, but I threw in sociology into my anthropology side of it, where I then studied a little bit broader of the society and its effect on those people who are doing cultural things. I can imagine that that uh, plays a very big role in your sele application selection, because at least you'll get a very good understanding of where people are coming from based on their regions of the United States. Correct. Correct. Do you like working at George Washington? Great question. Do you guys like working like, at George Washington? I like working here. Oh, I didn't have the question. Yeah, so I like working here. I'm probably the newest staff member. I just started working here in October, 
Um, but yes, I like it. I enjoy it. I've always wanted to work at, at George Washington, and I've always wanted to work in Washington, D.C., so I got the best of both worlds. And Tyson, what's your favorite thing about George Washington that you've learned so far? My favorite thing about George Washington that I've learned thus far? Um, I think it would have to be the people and how big and how far the name reaches, the fact that we recruit students from all over the globe. We are getting ready to mail acceptance letters to students, and uh, I was just looking at an address in Brazil and some in Africa and a couple in China, so it's kind of cool that we have all these people from across the globe that are going to come to D.C. and be a part of our student body. And I've actually been with George Washington University for almost nine years now, um, so I obviously like being here as well. Um, I think the diversity um, and the different cultures, back to the anthropology side of things, um, makes this institution just a standout institution to work for, um, and it provides just a many of us with um, great opportunities to do many things. Do you want to with the people on campus. Like, do you learn, do you uh, help, uh, when, you, when you're in school, do you, or when you're, where they're working now? Mm -hmm. When you're working now, do you have the opportunity to go out and speak with your students that are on campus now? David, do you wanna speak Yeah, to so uh, we all get to work really closely with the students here at GW. We have a lot of students that work in our office um, and help us on a daily basis that um, they are answering phones and answering emails and uh, sending out letters. Um, but we get to talk to students every single day and, and ask what they're doing and um, how excited they are to be at George Washington University. What is your most favorite thing or event or club organization to attend at GW? Probably the basketball games. <laughs> I think that's a good one. That, that actually leads me to a question. We have here, you guys can pick them up. We have here our colonial signs here. And we've I been love asking it. I love it. Nice. We've been asking all of the schools if they could if they could give us a cheer or a chant that we could practice up here in Keensburg. Well, let me give you a minute um, to well, let give us a minute. Um, and we will definitely do that. Hang okay. on. We're okay. going to get students to do a cheer for you, okay? Oh, that'd be great. <laughs> Hold on one second. All right. <laughs> That's a good question. Here, let me a a answer this one, and then hopefully we'll have students. Okay. <laughs> Go ahead. So how much technology do you use at school? What a great question. Did you hear that one? You no, I didn't. Nice and loud. How much technology do you use at your school? How much technology do you use at GW? How much technology do we use? We use a lot of technology, um, a lot of kind of the latest technology out there today. Um, a lot of our teachers will use computers in class to show PowerPoints and uh, all different slides. Uh, we also have, um, for our science students, they do a lot of different uh, research with, latest, with the latest technology every day as well. Um, so we have a lot of different technology. Um, here on campus. That's excellent. You know, we're, we're in the process of going one-to-one uh, -one with iPads at the elementary school. Uh, so one iPad for every student. So we've, we've gotten about four in every classroom. So they're, hopefully by next year we'll go one-to-one. -one, so. Absolutely. And I think a lot of our students do have iPads. Um, I have, I'm talking to you on an iPad, on an iPad uh, right now. Um, so our professors use them as well. Um, so they are uh, definitely all over our campus. All right. You guys ready to learn it? Yeah. Okay, we're ready. So we have two students here with us right now. Do you guys want to introduce yourself? Hi, I'm Nico. I'm Delaney. <laughs> Can you wave? Good. Hi. <laughs> so these students are in New Jersey. And they're learning all awesome. about different colleges, and they wanted to hear a GW cheer. Do you, do you want to sing it with us? I, yeah. yeah, I'll start it. All right, here we go.
Nico knows the most words of any of us. Um, but I will make sure we send a copy of that cheer to you guys so you can, you'll know all the different words and you can sing it too, okay? Well, we are going to be cheering for the buff and the blue here, right? Nice. Fantastic. <laughs> all right, guys. What do we say to Mr. David here for taking the time out of his day to talk to us? Thank you. Of course. It was my pleasure. And if you have any questions, feel free to have uh, Mr. Herbert give me, a, give me a call or send me an email, and I'm happy to answer them, okay? Thank you so much for taking time. We know it's a very busy time for you guys. Before we go, though, uh, we, we did get some, well, we're in the process of getting some T-shirts made up with our uh, Career Ready College Bound logo that I created for the, for the program that I'm doing here. So we nice. would love to mail you one. Uh, it, the way the PO is ordered, I'm not going to promise it anytime soon, but... I would like to mail one out to you when they do come in, so I'll shoot you an email and just give me uh, your shirt size and where to send it. That's That sounds awesome. I'm looking forward to it, and I will wear it proud and uh, definitely tell all, everyone I meet about you guys and the project that you're doing. We'll even send one to Nico, too, since he did such a good job with his cheer. He'll be excited. He'll be really excited. <laughs> Go ahead, Tristan, real quick. Why can't you take this car to your school? Oh, great question. Why was it that most students don't take a car to school? Because it's so, there's not very many parking spots in Washington D.C. Uh, there's being in the city, it's really hard to find parking. So not very, very many students have a car on campus. All right, so let's give them uh, one more. Go ahead. Does the president ever visit your school? Does the president ever visit your school? He has visited our school. He's spoken on campus. Um, the first lady has spoken on campus as well. Um, and a lot of students are late to class sometimes because the president's motorcade is driving through campus and they can't get across the street to class. Wow. Um, so we see the president all the time. He's lying to cars. Excellent. All right, so one more thing. Let's say go Colonials one more time. Go Colonials! <laughs> Thanks, guys. Have Thank a great you. Rest Have a great day. afternoon.